آؤز باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم افلا یہ تتبرون القرآن ولو خان امن عند غیر اللہ لوجد فی اختلاف کثیرا صدق اللہ العظیم رب شرح علی صدری و یسر علی عمری وحل العقدتم السانی یفقہ قولی ریسپیکٹیڈ ویورز اینڈ لسنرز السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ The verse which I have recited is from Surah An-Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 82. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us litmus test to check something. And no other religion, for my information so far, ever written in their documents about the test, falsification test, to judge the book. Accept Holy Quran. Chapter 4 verse 82. Allah says that why don't you ponder this book with care? Had it been from anyone other than Allah, you would have found therein much discrepancies, contradictions, not contradistinction, contradiction. Where zaman and makan are same, And two different things are to be found. That is contradiction. That is contradiction. Contradistinction is something else. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the litmus test to judge the book. I say no other religion does that to check the book. And why it's needed? You see, man... have a habit to always you know go into deep thinking it is the nature of a man to contemplate intrapersonals deep figments all these things it's our nature so allah says that i am giving you the book which can fulfill your urge complacency towards the nature research and all other aspects the human can think of do this onto this book and you will realize that this book is from allah it is the litmus test you see when we do tests like this in chemistry what is the point of litmus test that is is an acidic or alkaline so these kind of things when we come to a when we are doing a, what you call experiments research or you know chemical bonding and all those things you know how the atomic particles and how those those things you know isotopes etc how they make it to the compound uh, you know uh, what you call elements compounds so these things we do to find what the result of something so here is the test open this book i'm talking to those people especially who are atheistic concepts open this book and then apply the litmus test and you will see that you will be failed to prove this book to be wrong let's see all the other religions what do they offer as we compare them to islam first of all keep this in your mind islam is not a new religion which was created or coined by prophet muhammad peace be upon him rather it is the continuation pinnacle and the culminating point the summit of the mountain for example adam alayhi salam came one message was brought that god is one and whosoever the particular representative of god almighty you ought to follow him generation passed away people indulged into wrong things so again messengers came prophets came after and after one another the last of the prophets prophet muhammad of arabia sallallahu alaihi wasallam he came and the message he brought is the pinnacle culminating point as you reach to the summit of the mountain top notch and this book reasons to the whole world is just not talking generalization statement if you think that this book is not from god 
then you would have found therein much discrepancies. Go ahead and find, ponder it. Bring your giants and literature of giants and try to find faults in this book. You will never be able to do it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave three places the test about this book that brings something like of it. It repeated many places. Surah Yunus chapter number 10, verse number 34 to 38. Allah says that if you doubt about this book, that what we revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu then bring something like of it and change the people, transform the people with this, with your new, you know, so-called revelation. You want, we won't be able to do it. Then Allah escalates in Surah Hud, chapter 11, verse number 13, that brings something, even the fabricated ones, you will never be able to produce the fruits. Then Allah escalated again in chapter number 17, verse 88, and Allah challenged all the metaphysical sciences, massive metaphysical creation and non and physical creation. Humans and jinn. Jinn is the creation of God. You cannot see from your naked eyes, with these eyes. You can't see them. They are created from smokeless fire. Allah says, you with all the help together produce something like of Quran. You won't be able to do it. Even you all backed up one another. Then in Surah Al-Baqarah chapter 2, Verse 23, 24, Allah says, If you fail to do so, then ready for the hellfire, whose fuel is men and stones, prepared for the disbelievers. If you do not believe in this book, then ready for the hellfire. It's not that less you just got, you know, scot free and just, you know, enjoying your life because, okay, so what? If I don't believe in Holy Quran, so what? There is no so what. This book either rejected or accepted. It's a package deal. It's not about amend, amendment you can do it inside and try to tweak the package according to your taste, whims and inclination. No, you have to either accept the book or dare to reject it. Reject it on the grounds of this litmus test. If this book is not from God, then you would have found therein much discrepancies. I say, without the shadow of doubt, there is not a single contradiction in the entire Holy Quran. It's a challenge. Yes, you will find contradistinction that Allah created human, human beings from, you know, from different, different aspects. Like it has, we have blood, we have water created from mud, created from dust. These are the shades of different, you know, varieties. But it does not contradict one another. What is the contradiction in Arabic? When time and place, these both things are same, but two different ideologies are to be found. That is contradiction. None you will find in the Quran. Then you will not find the contradiction in the fundamental principles of God. For example, if God is one from the beginning, it's not that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made God Almighty into different, Nauzubillah. It's one up from beginning, one again till last. It's no confusion whatsoever. No confusion in Islam. It's totally natural religion. Every person born Muslim, because when you are born, what is definition of Muslim? The one who submits his will, or her will to the will of God, whatsoever God intended to do, we ought to follow him. This is what we hear and we follow. As Jesus Christ said, that my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. And my father who gave us to me, I speak all to you. This is what exactly, whatever God told us, absolute power and authority only to God Almighty. Nobody has absolute power and authority. It is he who has sent down everything and he is the creator. وَكَبِّرْهُ تَكْبِيرًا وَقُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي لَمْ يَتَّخِذْ وَلَدًا وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ شَرِيكٌ فِي الْمُلْكِ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ وَلِيٌّ مِّنَ الذُّلِّ وَكَبِّرْهُ تَكْبِيرًا He is beyond your all imaginations of creation. He is Allah. And you ought to praise him, glorify him alone. This is what Jesus says. In the chapter 17 of John, that, oh God Almighty, give me the reward that I have glorified thee 
that thou art the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Give me my reward. What I proclaim, what I praise in this dunya about you. O Allah, that you are the only, only. I hope English people speak her. English speaking people, they understand what is the meaning of only. You are the only true God and Jesus Christ. Exactly this is what Allah said. Nobody has your right to be praised except Allah when he's beyond all those weaknesses. He's in absolute in his omnipotence, omnipresence and omniscience. Then kabbirhu takbira. Then only glorify him alone. Nobody should be glorified besides him or associates in him whatsoever in the sense. Chapter number 17, verse number triple one. The last verse of Bani Israel. So test applied. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran is not one place. Many places Allah is reasoning with his creation. Then Allah says in another place in chapter number two, verse number uh that I think so 30 onwards, if you, per, if you study in the context, Allah says that, billahi? How do you deny in the existence of God? How do you deny in the existence of God? Can't you see that you were none? You were not existing. And we brought you into existence. And then we will cause you to die again. And then we will resurrect you again. So what is the catch here? People say, you know, maybe there is God, maybe so. Allah says then, from where did you come about? What's your origin? Can't you see that you were non-existent and we brought you into life, bringing you into the life where were you non-existent? This is the proof that there is Allah. Otherwise, go man, tell us, exaggerate the whole of the, you know, the most preposterous the proposition is. Readily be understood by the most superstitious and credulous people. Go man, exaggerate to the culminating point. Tell us where did we come from? Go to the highest level of your sickness and absurdities and anomalies of your atheism. I said, tell us where did we come from? What are the origins of human species? You cannot supply the answer. Yeah, you can just, you know, uh, what you call contemplate. Supposed to be assumed ideologies. No, sir, we don't need it. Allah says that, can't you see that you were not existing? And then you came into this body, your ruh, Kerem for Barzakh, put into your, this, you know, body, whatever the God gave you body, what type of body you have. And then, he will cause you to die again. And then he will resurrect you again. So if we are here in the first point, then we are, it is hard, impossible to deny that God will raise us again. Common sense. You are here. We are here. You cannot deny this existence. You can see all these things, three dimensional space. You cannot deny this. So if you can't deny this life, what is the reason that you are denying the other life? Eternal. You see, this is sickness. We have in our minds blocking the spiritualism world because of Fitna the Dajjal. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi warned us Fitna Dajjal is meant to delude people away from the spirituality and put in your hearts into the way of materialism. So everything you think, I can, you know, see, observe with my five senses, I will believe it. If something is beyond my five senses, there is nothing there. There is no existence. You see, 100 years back, do you really know what was the, you know, microorganisms, the quantum physics, the physics we are studying right now, can't you believe?
أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم إني أسألك العفو والعافية في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم إني أسألك العفو والعافية في الدنيا والآخرة So the point I was making this atheist I said stand to reason don't just give us you know your own uh, explanation I said my explanation is better than yours which makes sense and logic so Allah tells reasons many places then in one place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what it cost you to believe in me do you have to pay some utility tax or utility bills what costs you to believe in me in God Almighty and what will happen if you die and you find out later on that there is God and you what what's like what is cost you to believe in him it's better to believe in him and die you see in Surah Al-Hajj in chapter number 22 verse 15 Allah says that if you doubt about whatever we reveal to Prophet Muhammad and what is all this creation and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then take a rope and hang yourself do and make a suicide you know commit suicide Allah says I will see that you will meet me and then I will see how your anger you know will be placated then Allah will see you I said do and do it if you doubt in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just take a rope and just hang yourself. And you will see from Ayn al yaqeen from your physical eyes, the way you look things now in the three-dimensional space, that is the way you will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation and akhirah. It is a matter of time. You see, humanity has to understand that there is no other way not to accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no other way, lest you have to accept him. If there is any other way, tell us, show us. Humanity has been seeking for social justice for 300 to 600 years. These, you know, crises came in the history, annals of history. These, you know, colonialism, clo colonialism, then this British subjugation, same thing. And what are we achieving? Why French Revolution came? What was the root cause of it? Social justice. Some were fighting for political change. Some were fighting for economical change. Some were fighting for social change. I said humanity, if humanity is good enough without the revealed knowledge, then why there were so many altercations in the past, consternation in the past, dissenting voices in the past. I said, why? Why there was no solution? The reason is because God created us and all the holy scriptures are the manuals. You ought to follow them. Otherwise, you will trip and fall and you will simmer in the soup. There is no other way. Humanity already tried it. Look at the West. This secularism so-called. What are you achieving? Your women are coming back to Islam because natural religion, natural thing attracts human beings. Because this fitra, it Allah says Islam is based on fitra, your natural instincts. Everything you can see here is running into some intelligence. And that intelligence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. Allah says neither the sun will catch or able to catch the moon, nor moon can catch the sun. Everything are just taking an galactical path and swimming on its axis. This is what Allah says in the Quran. Night cannot catch the day, day cannot catch the night. Because if it's so, then whole the solar system will collapse. Can't you see? Everything concisely has been driven into some direction. You know, I wonder when you see the animals, forget about yourself, see the animals. You see kangaroos, we call them marsupials. You see, they have a pouches. Who created those pouches? I wondered, you know. I was, uh, you know, studying about the animals and their behavior and then kangaroo came and I read about this in marsupials and there you find them in Australia. This animal has a pouch to put her babies. I said, how come the pouch came about? Is it through some kind of evolution? No, can't you see? It's the divine intelligence, tiny thing. You see, my father always tell me, insan, human beings are the most intelligent species on planet, no doubt. 
because we are able to express, we are able to contemplate, we are able to you know infer, we are able to induce and deduce. We have logical arguments. But is it, isn't it amazing? It's not amazing that baby of a human is the hardest to raise than the babies or the young ones of the animals. Let me repeat again. You see, if the human child is born, you have to look her or him continuously. Mothers, sometimes they are sleepless. They have to look their child. And this species is the most intelligent species on planet. And the most intelligent species is depending on his mother or her mother. Contemplate this. Animals, we don't call them intelligent beings. When their babies are born, they just, you know, raised by themselves without any problems. This is the message, intelligence, divine intelligence going on. And this is also the message to humans that you think you are Nimrud and Pharaoh, you can't even, you know, raise yourself when you are babies. That's why Allah says, Rabbir hamhuma kama rabbayani sagira. Oh Allah, show the mercy, the wings of mercy on my parents as they showed in the past when I was a baby. Show them the mercy, the wings of mercy. Why? Because when we were babies, we were helpless little puny creatures. And our parents raised us. You see, I don't want to say that. You heard many times, you know, the, some parents, they produce children born after, you know, wet locks, and they throw their children into dumpsters. Astaghfirullah. And that child is helpless. Baby is helpless unless somebody took and, you know, adopt that baby or sent into some orphanage houses, orphanages. Imagine that if this child, nobody takes care, what happened to this child? Die. Child will die. But animals, they will survive. So can't you see there is a divine intelligence going on? And this divine intelligence is calculated everything. You see, just talk about chemistry. You know, all these atoms, the, the smallest number is in atoms. In atoms, there are atomic numbers. Number of protons, number of electrons, number of neutrons. And they're making balancing going on continuously. Balancing is just like an orbiting. It's just like a cloud. A clouds of these all, you know, elements. And they keep working on together. I said, who made this? Who made this all? How can you say it's, an, it's like an accident? It's a divine intelligence. Each atomic number, if it changes, it changes all the mass. It changes all the atom and changes all the property of the mass. And you said that, no, it's the same thing. It's something accident going on. Physical law of nature under this gravitational values we have. You know, if the gravity changes, everything changes. We have to make a new physics. We have to create new physics. You know that if the gravity changes a little bit, if sun loses its gravity a little bit, the earth will drift away and will become a dwarf planet. And if sun, you know, gets little stronger, it will suck the earth into it and earth will burn like what you, you know that what will happen. If only some solar flare comes, the whole of the earth can be destroyed. And you are talking that nothing is there. This is all calculation when Allah says that you cannot catch one another because if they have catch one another, then there will be change in the direction of the sun. In the distance, I mean, and everything will collapse. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all the universe into the cosmic balance. And this balance is so sophisticated that every number values. This is the point here. So there is divine intelligence. Allah keeps saying in the Quran, can't you see the birds, how they fly? How they balanced it in the air. If there is no air pressure, there is no, you know, avionics. Gone. No air dynamics. Gone. So every dynamics of air is because you have pressure and which you call uh, atmosphere. If there is no atmosphere, sir, you know, in the Mars, in the Mars, if you want to put a drone, it has to make, you know, this, uh, what you call, 
uh, turns, so the laps, loops of this wing, double time than the Earth because of lack of atmosphere. So if the airplane has to fly in the Mars, it has to move, put more extra propulsion to fly it, like jet, like these jet liners. They have to do extra effort to fly there because lack of atmosphere. So if atmosphere changes, the entire concept of science will change. Can't you see? If this calculation made us this science, then when Allah says that I have calculated everything, you don't take care of that. You said, so what? Allah says in Surah Maryam chapter 19, last verses, Allah says, everything I have numbered to creation up to everything I have numbered. So the point is keep contemplating. You will see that everything in front of you on horizon, Allah says in Surah Fursila chapter 47, in chapter 41, sorry, verse number 57, Allah says that we show, we will show our signs, you know, on the horizon. Or in the horizon, we will sign, you know, horizon where the cut of the land with the air, you find the line. We will surely show our signs in the horizon. And within your own selves, horizon, and everywhere you can see the contemplated, the eyes can go and within your own self, then your heart will testify that this is Al-Haq. I said, you know, just contemplate on your own body. Just contemplate on heart. This heart is a cardiac organ. It's a full of muscle. We call them cardiac. You see, this heart is full of muscle. You see, if you have an arm, you keep doing like this, you know, your biceps and triceps, keep doing, doing, doing it after I think so even few minutes, you can't bear the pain. You know that? Because your muscle will get fatigued or will be torn if you don't take care of it. Tendons, muscle, ligaments. But this heart, since you were born, it's a muscle. It's still like going on and it never gets tired. I said, who kept it going on? Who keeps it going on without any fatigue? And the electricity, you know, heart produces little current in amperes, you know, and that there's the two layers of the heart upper and bottom part, you know, and then the nodes, they do like this and the heart, you know, contract and relax. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this, can't you see? You know, cuttlefish, three hearts, three or two, I don't remember, but at least two hearts. Imagine that. This is the creation of God. Go to Mariana Trench. Look at the pressure there. 33,000 feet. The pressure is so intense. The pressure of square inches that you will be squeed like 1 million or 100,000 elephants, you know, step on you. So much pressure. You find marine lives there. Who is making this all? I said this is endless. I can speak endlessly. And you know, keep going on. The few points here, just to open the eyes. Quran is the book which gives challenges. It's reasons with you. Allah created everything. He's Khalik. And you will die one day. And you have to pay for your accountability. As Christians roughly have this idea, you know, about uh, what you call redeeming. Roman Catholics, I rather say, not Protestants. They believe somehow, you know, about purgatory, pur uh, about this... Uh, Purgatory, yes, there where you, you know, go temporarily and then you go to heaven, to hell temporarily. You see, every religion tells that if you don't do things, there is something waiting for you. So better wake up and seek ye the truth. It shall set you free. This is what Jesus Christ said. And Allah also says that you seek for the truth. I will open your eyes. If Allah wants to put Islam into the chest, he will open the chest. If he doesn't want it, he will constrict the chest that the man is, you know, just going to up to the heaven and his chest is getting constricted. This is chapter 6, verse 124 and 125.